Okay, I'm making another video, and this is of an orb in real time, and in the background is the voice of Lay J. Mikoski. Might not be pronouncing his name right, but anyway, I just heard of him the other day from my grandson, and uh, I, I've been watching a few of his videos, and he's a visionary artist, among other things, and... He's very good. I, I'm going to put one of his videos in the um, in the bar, the description bar, so you can go to the very one I was listening to as I was filming the orbs that I see. Now, for those of you who don't know, and I hope this will be seen by Mr. McCloskey, for those of you who don't know, let me turn this light off so it <laughs> doesn't show me in the background. I take my camera, and it's a digital camera, and I have a lead light on in my room, and something made of glass, usually it's glass clear marbles, but I can, it can be a candlestick holder or any other object of glass that will make shiny spots appear when this light is shined on them. And then I go in real close in the focus on the camera with no flash, and I film that light, those shiny spots of light become what you're seeing here. And um, I'm going to show you some still pictures of some of the beautiful insides of orbs that are so colorful. And uh, I'm just going to go from one to the other. And since Mr. M McCloskey is a visionary artist. He might be interested in looking at some of the many, I have thousands of pictures of orbs, no two alike, and beautiful colors. I'm just going to whiz through a few here because I have much to say that I don't want to make this too long. I only have like 15 or 20 minutes before YouTube won't take it if I say it's too long. Now see what an orb can do? It can it can look like a wave. This particular one looks like to me like a wave is cresting up right there. And they are so interesting. Of course this camera of mine has these little artifacts. There's several of them that always show up in the same place and I and they grow in number. And sometimes I wonder about my artifacts. There's one of them right in the middle of this. But you see the orb will fan out and it gets the most fluorescent, fantastic colors in it which are changing every all the time. They're morphing from one color to another. This one kind of looks like a honeycomb, but that's an orb. And they just do so many strange things. I'll just go through some of these. I have, I have too many to get it all in. But this little character here, I want to introduce you to him. He's Harry. He's a light creature that actually I can say Harry show up when I'm making a video and sometimes within a minute or two he does. And I kind of feel like since I see him so often and I've taken so many pictures of him that he is a being of some sort. There are so many unusual things, circles within circles with concentric circles and black centers and, I, and this particular camera always puts two eyes, you can see them right there, I'm pointing to them, in each orb. If there were like four or five orbs shown, each would have two eyes right there on that portion of the orb. So that alone is a big mystery. I have so many beautiful examples of orbs. Now look at this one. It has a figure eight in it. Isn't that interesting? The figure eight. I've gotten other orbs pictures where there was an eight in it as well. But orbs of light, I call them photons because I see them come right out of the light. Kind of wrinkled and kind of the shape of a, well, the shape is kind of like a teardrop shape. But then as, he, as they get further out from the light, they become more round. But they don't have to stay round. They can do all kinds of things, like look at this one. Some of the orbs in it did a little twirly bird. 
this light is so full of color and beautiful colors the way they merge together. I can never paint this well. And sometimes an orb will have dark spots or what looks like a branch of a tree or something right through the middle of it. They can do so many things. They maneuver to look so many ways. And sometimes they look like a stack of bowls. And sometimes one orb enters into another one. There's patterns that can be found in them. All kinds of things. They get kind of wild sometimes. They twist in the middle and make, make their self look like, like this. I don't know what that looks like. And the colors, well, are just fantastic. Circles, I don't know if you can see this, but there's tiny, tiny, tiny little circles everywhere. <laughs> Hundreds of them. And then there's bigger circles. And there's circles, they look like wheels in the middle of the air. It reminds me of a part in the Bible about Ezekiel saw the wheel way up in the middle of the air. And I think a lot of artists of old saw a lot of orbs that most people don't see today because now you have to have the ability to see this, which I've developed, I believe. One day, this ring came in, only on one day, see this ring here? And it was August the 13th, 2013. And I kept getting this ring showing up in all the orbs that day. It hasn't showed up again since then. And there's my little friend Harry again. He has portions of his body that just seem to be floating around him. They don't really seem to be attached. There's the rings. There was a ring in this orb and there was a ring in this one. And sometimes the light doesn't take the shape of an orb at all. It's just moving, and you can see it like streaking here and there. And sometimes it rains down like a torrent like this. There's so many things it does, and the colors are so beautiful, and never any two orbs exactly alike. Now sometimes the orbs will look quite white, but they have these little strange characters in them, and they have this little X. I see that little X with the naked eye also. There's, there's Harry again. He's in this orb, but not these. He'll just show up in one particular orb or another. And that's him if you would believe it, but he's not showing up real good because of the color that's around him. And he's up here in this one. I was a little worried about him because all this stuff under here looked like it was about to entangle him in its mass. Sometimes I'll see in the orb but just a dark spot that's got a little color in it and it seems to be thick. I'm long past believing that I'm looking at caustics. Some people say, you're looking at caustics or particulates in the glass or so, any number of things. But I don't believe that because I see this a lot of what I see here. I see with the naked eye. Only thing is, when you take a picture, you've got a close-up still picture. And, would you, and it's magnified many times bigger than what you see with the naked eye. But I do see quite a lot with the naked eye. Like over here on this, the one that's the moving video. I'll let you see that for a little while. Uh, I, I also will put a video in this woman named Diane made where she showed the great artist sculptures and paintings that look a whole lot like orbs but we call them abstract paintings nowadays. But she shows pictures of real orbs that have been taken and their artwork that mimics how, that, how orbs look to us today. Those of us who can see them. I think one of the ways that you can see an orb is to believe that we are all one. I think that's a requirement. Okay, that's over. But back to these pictures here. And I will continue showing a sample of a few of the orb pictures I have. See how they come out from the light? That teardrop shape 
and kind of wrinkled, but then when they get out a little further, they're round. And there's no two alike. I think I've said that, though. <laughs> they're so interesting to look at. I feel like I haven't done enough artistic work with these orbs. Like, maybe I should display them better and get people more interested. I have only a few people that know about this, but I'm always challenging people uh, to use my technique, which is very simple, for taking pictures of these. I've made many videos where I've told how to do it. And look, this is real close up in one that had a real shiny spot there. And see all the little tiny orbs? And all these wheels are donut looking things. And see this these are coming out from the light and they already are full of color as they come out. And with my eye or with the camera I can put that orb right back into the light just by the focus I have with the camera. And that orb would go right back into the light with all that color in it. And I wanted to mention the fact that I see this in the in the air, little tube-like things. And also that Ed Le, 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 Le Scallion, the guy who built the coral castle, he called them chromosomes, and he said they were on the surface of our eye. He was seeing this all on the surface of his eye, which I can believe because I've, I've experimented with that as well. There's these little tube-like things that just seem to float about and they have an outline of white and then a little darker outline outside of the white. And I, sometimes I see uh, several of them just pieces, but they'll be entangled in one another. I don't know much about science, but when they say entanglement, I can see entanglement in what it is that I see. And I could believe, yeah, the string theory might be something to that. I think we're all connected by little invisible tiny strings. <laughs> and they're colorful. But, of course, I can't prove anything. But I do have pictures. Not that I've gotten the interest of any scientific minds out there. I did get one scientific person say, oh, well, they're pretty. <laughs> and I thought, my goodness, you study light. You should know. Uh, to inquire more than just say they're pretty. But his opinion is, oh, this is just new age nonsense. Now look at this one. Looks like a big portion comes out of it there. And for scientists who won't look into something that they consider new age nonsense, I think they're going to be sadly upset that they didn't look into it when it becomes provable. I don't know why this doesn't prove something to them because I don't know how to fake pictures. I'm taking these with a little digital camera and the only alteration I do is I, I, when I've got them on my computer, I'll take a little of the light out, I'll lessen the light because then the colors will be real clear and, and brighter. This is from a book that I read on my website called uh, The Return of the Bird Tribes. For when the storm is over, that ember will ignite a dawn brighter than any dawn before. A new tree will grow, more glorious than this tree I leave with you now. With that new dawn, I will return. Under the, sh under the shade of that new tree, I will live with you, and with us will be gathered not only the tribes shaded red, but the white tribes from the north and the black tribes from the south and the yellow tribes from the east. In harmony, the four races will live beneath the boughs of the new tree. The age that we will see together will be the best that has ever been. All that has been broken will be made whole. The sacred hoop will be mended. And that is from a book called The Return of the Bird Tribes by Ken Carey. Sometimes I get these wildest fluorescent colors when I'm filming. Oh, let me read you this. This is from Walter Russell. Man conceives life to be a property apart from matter, quickening compound elements of inorganic matter into living, functioning organic beings. 
Man defines inorganic matter as those elements or compounds of matter in which there is no life and in which there is no vitality nor intelligence. Man conceives life as spontaneously generated in matter at favorable temperatures and under favorable conditions. Such concepts are not true concepts. In searching for the life principle, man is attempting to discover something corresponding to a germ which quickens lifeless matter. Life is not a germ, and no matter is lifeless. Life is in and of all things from the beginning, always and forever. Life has no beginning. Life has no ending. Life is eternal. I read a lot of Walter Russell's books. Anyway, on my channel you can find, I read The Secret of Light, The Divine Iliads, Atomic Suicide, A New Concept of the Universe, many, many books that you, you would enjoy hearing I read of his. I think that's one reason I was able to finally figure out quite by accident a way to take pictures of these orbs that show all this light and life because I have a love for that and I have sort of made it my life's purpose to make it known to others. Anyway, quite a few people have uh, been able to also get orbs in their pictures of this kind. There's all kinds of orbs. Some orbs are like an orb that water and dust makes an orb when the flash of a camera in a night sky flashes on them. But there are other things that are orbs that aren't water or dust. The scientists will stick with it, always oh, water or dust. But those of us who can think a little beyond the scientific ignorance of not looking into anything they can't think that they could explain, we know better. We know that some of the orbs are, are beings of light, and they even may be personalities that we that have passed on. Maybe our, our people that have passed on come back to visit us and look at us. You can't say it isn't, and maybe you can't say it is, but you know, it's something. And I'm showing pictures of this. So it's not nothing. <laughs> it's not a nothing thing. Anyway, I hope to get Mr. McCloskey to look at this video and maybe he might want to work with some of my pictures in his art, in his visionary art, because everyone is welcome to go to my, well, it's Google profile under my uh, photos part of it. I've got many, many pictures of the orbs, thousands of them probably. You can go there and you're free to use any one you want. Well, this is the Dove Lady. I better end this before I make it too long. Over and out for now. Bye-bye.